Hi guys and welcome back to Ask NK. In today's video, we will be reviewing a very amazing tool that is super cool. And if you're into rigging and animation, then probably this tool is going to be for you. And the tool we're looking at is no other tool than the amazing Akitsu tool that is made possible by the guys at Nukigera. And if you want to get a copy of Akitsu, you need to go to www.anukigera.com and you can uh, go ahead and click on the try and try this tool out for I, I think 30 days yeah so you can get this tool and try it out for 30 days it is an amazing tool that I would suggest or I would actually encourage you to try out especially if you're into biped rigging and also biped animation contrary to other animation tools that uh, kind of have a lot of things around it this tool is actually streamlined to the barest or to the most simplest and minimal tools that you need as a rigging artist and also as an animator. I think it thrives a lot more when it gets to do with you being able to rig and animate biped and a little bit of very streamlined characters rather than doing uh, more of a quadruped and we're going to actually look at this tool right now. And then once you get this tool downloaded, you open it up and this is exactly how it looks. This is definitely how it looks. There is nothing too uh, different about this. So the first things you get to notice once you open this tool up is you're going to find a big uh, viewport like this and a couple of tools hanging around. We're going to explain all of these tools real quick. First and foremost, before you start off, I would really, really advise that you definitely have what you want to work with and then you can you know enjoy using this tool if you don't have a mesh that you can work with you can go over and download fbx meshes from the character generator by autodesk or from other places links are in the description just in case you want to find those things out and now let's talk about the ui the ui is incredibly simple i'm not so much of a fan of these things that stuck around but since it works, then it's fine. First and foremost, let's start by how you can navigate around the viewport and then we can talk about all of these tools that hang around. So if you want to walk around or you want to navigate around Akitsu, all you need is a mouse. You need a three button mouse or you need a pen, which makes it very, very easy for you to navigate around Akitsu. To navigate around Akitsu, if you click the left mouse button, you can orbit around your object. If you click and drag with the middle mouse button you can pan around your object and if you click and drag with the right mouse button you can zoom in and zoom out let's actually open up a demo file that is made possible by the guys at uh, Nukigera and take a quick look at it now there is a demo file called Aki Boy let's just look at it and see how we can move around our scene so with the left mouse button we can rotate around with our middle mouse we can pan and with our right mouse button we can zoom in and, and zoom out and with this you can see that within the time where we switch into animation we have something totally different going on here let me quickly explain all of those windows so that it can make sense why we proceed so you will notice that initially we had something called character bank now this only changes when you are working with a character at the point of rigging this is changed to character bank but when you start animating, this automatically changes to animation bank. And you can change this by simply clicking on this keyframe icon here. And once you click, you're now within the character creation space. And once you click this, you're now within the animation space. And you can also notice that the windows simply change to each of the clicks that we perform. Let me quickly go over this so that you can get a very good understanding of how all of these things work. Now within the character bank, every single character you're creating needs to live within this space. And within the tree, this is actually your outliner. If you're very familiar with apps like Maya, this is more like your outliner or like your hierarchy bar. The properties get to do with the joint that is currently selected. Within the skin atella, this is where you get to skin, paint weight and do all of those amazing things you would like to do to your skins and, and your weight painting. Within the picker, this picker is responsible for all the joints that you have here. So if you select one of them, you can notice we're going around selecting different joints that exist within our character. You can also select joints by just simply clicking on respective places where the joints have been placed and you can easily just simply select this and manipulate it. Now the idea behind Akitsu simply mirrors 
how you should work if you're using something like the Pixar or the Disney Presto tool. So it simply has to do with you being able to just simply click and not select controllers but just simply click and go around and manipulate or play with the geometry. A cool thing with Akitsu is it takes away the entire hassle that gets to do with you creating FK and IK joints and you know creating the entire FK and IK blend. Once you go ahead and create an IK, automatically the FK exists and you can manipulate in between these at any point in time. So contrary to other apps where you get to create an IK joint, then create an FK joint, then create a middle joint that you use to switch between each of these. In Akitsu, you don't need all of those things. You can just simply get your model working out for you in real time. The transform that you get here gets to do with the basic transforms and this skeleton gets to do with uh, you being able to create joint and manipulating the entire joint that exists around there. Now the next big thing which you'll be wondering how it works is this tool that we have here. This is actually called the spinner and the spinner gets to do with your transforms, uh, your scale, your rotate and your translation. And a very good way to actually uh, work with this is you notice that to each of these sites that you find here that you they are all corresponding to different axes within your object. So the red is responsible for the Y axis and while the green is responsible for the Z and then you can also see this that's responsible for the X. This is also applicable to other uh, transform, transform objects like rotate and scale. You can also see them here. Now when it gets to do with scale, there is just a very tiny button that you find here and this button that you get here is responsible for a much more uniform scale. And I'll talk about this later in the video. Now let's get on with how you can uh, simply animate with this tool. Now for you to be able to animate, you need to switch from this to this, right? And once you do that, you will be able to get access to the timeline and the time slider. You also get access to the time range, which you can click and drag to increase or reduce how much time range you want to get within the time you're working with this tool. Within the animation bank, before you start creating any animation, you need to open up a new animation bank and all of the animations that you create are all stored within the animation bank. So just in case you're wondering where your animations go, this is where you store them and you can switch in between all of the animations that exist here. Something that is really, really similar with how you work in both Motion Builder and in Maya. Speaking about Maya, we have a tutorial that talks about how you can work with animation layers directly in Maya, especially if you're bringing in things like motion uh, capture files. So I'm going to put that link in the description so you'll be able to you know, find that out just in case it's something that excites you. Within the Cycle Maker, you can use the Cycle Maker to actually make cycles, so like a walk cycle, a run cycle, and all that stuff. The Stacker is something that doesn't exist when you are within your character creation mode, it only exists during the animation mode. Now, all of these gets to do with individual keys that you find here. You see, if I scroll around these, you're going to notice that this keeps moving from one keyframe to the other, and this is actually responsible for all of your keys. And if you're wondering why we're having the ghosting, is because we have ghosting turned on here. You can turn it on and you can turn it off at any point in time. The mixer gets to do with basically you being able to mix the animations that you've made around or maybe you can also find i think i also we also have a tutorial about that somewhere in the channel i'll find it and you know put a card somewhere so you can find that as well so let's get into a little bit of the meat and potatoes of this and you might be wondering how do you actually switch because a lot of people don't really find it very fancy to work with the perspective mode alone so just in case you want to get the other uh, modes, let's say you want to get other viewports like your front, back, uh, left and right, you can get that by simply clicking on this gear icon. I am not so okay with the fact that this is here, alright? So I'm not really okay uh, with the fact that the layout button is here. Maybe if it's a little bit bigger or maybe, you know, it stacks up somewhere, someone can actually click or maybe see it. I think it will make a lot of sense but for now this is where it is and you know that's how we get to find it so if you simply click here there is a lot of things that you can find here so let's just start off with a very simple one if you want to change the layout that you have here say you don't want to work with perspective alone you can come through and click this and then you're going to find the entire you know the entire perspective that you want your side view your top view your your okay your, your side view 
your top view and your front view you'll find all of them there and uh, also if you want to jump into any view at any point you can just simply select this click here and jump right back to this part or you can simply just simply click here and also jump right back to this place a very quick shortcut key to this is by simply uh, pressing F4 on your keyboard and so if you press F4 on your keyboard you would be able to jump right back into uh, that mode at any point in time so for the very uh for this big mode you get to press f1 for this other mode where you get to find just two is f2 and this is f3 where you get to see your uh, graph editor and we're going to talk about that real quick and you know you can also jump into f4 that gives you the ability to switch through these things and speaking about this let me just talk about the graph editor real quick now the graph editor that you find here your graph editor actually lives in your viewport. So your graph editor doesn't live somewhere totally different. So let's say you are in a, a much more bigger mode like this and you want to still see your graph editor directly here. You can just simply click and you can see your graph editor directly on your viewport. So now we've actually looked at these, we've seen these and we've also seen how you can work with this. So I'm just going to simply uh, press F1 or just simply click this so that you can close that just in case you don't want to see it. Then the next thing which we're going to do is take a good look at the shading. So if you look at this character now, you find that we have the textures turned on. And if you're more like this artist that don't like seeing textures while you're working, maybe you like to see wireframes more. You can click here and turn on the wireframe. And with this, you can have both the wireframe and the textures turned on as well. If you want to just go back, you can click this button. If you want to see the joints to see how the joints are placed on this model, you can simply do that by clicking on this button here and turning on the joint. If you want to see how the joints are being oriented, you can click here and turn this on. So this is how you can see the joint and also see the orientation of the joint. And so this is Akitsu and one of the things you need to know about the software before you actually get your hands in is this software doesn't have anything that has to do with the formers. I really wish they had the formers but there is no deformer that has to do with this software and that simply means that you cannot do things like your blend shape. Every single thing which you're doing here is targeted towards using your join setup to create them and so this software is targeted towards game developers and game character animators but these days we're beginning to notice that a lot of people actually create amazing piece with uh, not just using uh, joints but now some applications actually support some things like uh, blend shapes so the fact that it doesn't have blend shape is also something I really really think you know could actually sell this for for me but then it doesn't have blend shape and that simply means that for something like this you have to go ahead and create a joint that should be responsible for a very uh, simple thing like a, a smile and, and all that stuff. So these are my uh, my two thoughts about it. I really wish that maybe it had uh, things like deformations and all that stuff but then it doesn't have something like that. A simple bend uh, thing would be fine but I guess they're just stripping this thing down for people that are just into animation for games. It's not like you cannot use this for like a real world animation but then the, the time you get to spend trying to create joints for every single part of the face is also time that you can spend in doing something else while uh, trying to animate and these are just my two thoughts about it and I would like to know what you guys think about this in the comment section below and if you want to buy this tool this tool goes for $40 which is amazing if you are a student or let's say you just want to use it as a freelancer not something so much for commercial use then if you want to use it for proper commercial use and you're making about this kind of amount a year, then you should be paying about $180. This doesn't have to do with subscription by the way, which makes it amazingly nice for you to have a copy of this tool before they jump into that subscription boat. And then if you like this video, simply give it a like and don't forget to share with your friends. And if you're new here, it would be awesome if you can hit that subscribe button and also turn on notifications so you'll be the first to know once we release a new video. And until I see you guys again with a tutorial, review, uh, updates, tips and tricks, free Friday, things like this. Peace.